Welcome to uh, February. It's uh, pretty late on in February now. Uh, it's not that we haven't been doing all, but we haven't been doing much that I thought there were any interest on the video. Uh, although I should perhaps have videoed us emptying the waterless toilet at Far uh, Little Farrier's. <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to see that. But yeah, uh, those of you that watch the January one, we've finished off in January. As you see, seen, we're doing the swims and now uh, we're not far off finishing. We've just been putting the grass down. So hopefully we should have them open soon. We have made one difference. Uh, we've actually stood in peg 23, 24, which uh, traditionally were called the uh, split swim. As you can see, we've done the front. If you just pan round a bit there, Cal. We've done the front and uh, it's no longer split. It's uh, one rather big swim. And uh, so this is now a double swim. And uh, because it's not a split swim, we thought it uh, perhaps needed a new name for it. And uh, what we've decided to do is, uh, most of you are familiar with the Carp Society. We've been going 40 years now. We've, uh, it's no secret we've had our ups and downs. We've sailed close to the edge a couple of times through, I won't go into it, but you know full well, you know, we've had some wrong ones here and there, not just the ones you think. But uh, the one thing that has kept us going throughout this, well, without a shadow of doubt in my mind, was uh, the purchase of this place, Horseshoe Lake. And, uh, you know, it saved us numerous times. It, it's... Uh, it's just been a godsend and uh, the person sort of most responsible for this is a, a chap called Mike Kavanagh and uh, the older generation are probably well aware of Mike but the younger generation perhaps don't know much about Mike and uh, don't give him the uh, kudos he deserves so without Mike the cap side chances are we wouldn't own our shoe so uh, what we've decided to do is uh, name this swim and if you zoom in there you can have a look there and this swim from now on will be known as Kavanaghs as uh, our little tribute to Mike and uh, a thank you from anyone who's ever fished on our show for, uh, for buying it in the first place so uh, thank you very much Mike and uh, I hope you're pleased with it and uh, I hope there's a few fish caught in here in your honour so right I'll show you a bit more in February but that's it for now
Right then, uh, while we've been faffing around with the swims and what have you, getting ready, uh, there's been uh, reports of quite a few fish coming out, so uh, what we'll do, we'll go and have a word with one of the guys who's uh, fishing up, I think he's on Winter Point. Uh, the fishing so far in Orsham, it started off at the beginning of the year, we had quite a lot of fish coming out, and then obviously the uh, the ice and the frost and the cold weather just sort of put a stop to it, but uh, definitely seems to be picking up now and uh, I think the guy's uh, is doing all right so uh, we'll go and have a word with him and see what he's see actually what he's been doing <laughs> right. right John uh, thanks for uh, joining us uh, word on the street is you you're not having a bad session no um yeah I came Monday afternoon had a good chat with Carl I knew he'd done a few fish um sort of spread around winter bay uh, and Carl sort of reinforced that with what he said um, and decided to go into Winter Point um, I didn't want to go up into the channel or too far down to White Post and find out I'm off the end of the fish so I chose a more central section, more central area um, put some bait out, baited re you know, reasonably heavy I suppose for the time of year but you know it's mid-February um, nothing happened until about midnight the first night and had a couple of fish and then it sort of quietened off again redid the rods first thing Tuesday morning and yesterday just kind of went by in a bit of a blur of alarms <laughs> baiting um, spotting taking photos weighing fish um, and it just it slowed down a little bit in the evening um, and again it sort of stopped most of last night and I actually managed to get some sleep yeah. so you got sort of five hours sleep last night um, redid the rods first thing this morning put a bit more bait out and um, had a triple take within about an hour of the bait going out yeah um, and that puts me on 20 fish in total did you land them all on the triple take then yes I did yeah well the first the first one went and literally as I landed it the second one went and literally as I landed it the third one went yeah so it was you know it, 30 seconds later with each fish the other rods would have been yeah, yeah, yeah. but I've had two double takes as well yeah. um, fortunately a guy on the next peg had just come uh, I shouted him over and he came and helped me uh, and the other one the fish was sort of three quarters away in any way so uh, I'd sort of bundle them in the net as quick as I can um, yeah. and just I tighten the clutch down a little bit on the reel so we you know you want to just try and especially with the barbless hooks yeah, yeah, yeah. keep a bit of tension on the line you know keep keep sort of the rod in contact with the fish um, and you know I could hear it slowly ticking away so it, it seemed okay but there's nothing else you can do really no, no. concentrate on the fish that you've got on and then just hope the other one sort of stays on or yeah. finds a wee bed and sits still yeah it's a nice um, problem to have anyway it's right? an unusual <laughs> problem to have yeah it doesn't happen every day no I mean uh, 20 fish what are we 22nd of summer of February that, that, yeah. that's quite yeah. nuts isn't it uh, yeah I never uh, I've, obviously as you know I've had to um, come into the shop and uh, restock on a bit of corn and pellet and stuff because yeah. I was going through the bait um, I'm literally down to me <coughs> excuse me my last three leads uh, I've had to cut the lead off my marker rod yeah. uh, I've had to dig in the bottom of me you know that old cliche digging in the bottom of your rucksack yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was you know and I managed to, <laughs> I've literally got my last three leads on so yeah. uh, I've, I've been the weed's not that bad so it hasn't really been necessary to drop the leads uh, and I haven't been intentionally trying to drop the leads no. but obviously just with the fight of the fish and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know when you're fishing at sort of 80 90 yards out it's a long way to bring the fish in and it, you know invariably you know a few a few leads drop now and then so I've got a robin trying to sneak yeah I've just seen it there yeah <laughs> looking for tidbits yeah so uh, you like 20 fish yep what what sort of weight ranges have they been um oh, wait, so i think i've had i think it's been four doubles the smallest i've had was 13 uh up to sort of 19 in the doubles um and there's a nice little story about one of the one of the doubles when i um i fished here i think once or twice maybe before the fish kill um and then i came back after once horse was back on its feet going again and my first ever fish was um, like a little snub nosed, bright, fresh as a penny he was, very dark, bright sort of sovereign scales, beautiful yeah. little sort of cat. You'd watch, you know, you'd call him a character fish. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember asking a few guys that I know from here if anybody had seen it in the last couple of years, and they would no, no, I've not seen that fish. And then having recently watched Tom Maker's film on here, I saw him catch it and I was like, no way, that's that fish. That's my first ever fish from Horseshoe, you know. Yeah, yeah. Nice to see it still alive. 
and uh, actually the third one of that triple take was that fish oh wow um, I know it's incredible really I was just chatting to Carl about it last night I've almost talked him onto the hook I think uh, and he was 19 and a half um, uh, then I've had three twenties um, I've had two sort of uh, sorry three thirties I've had sort of three two thirteen ounces and I've had a 33 and a half is the biggest uh, all mirrors um, and all the rest is made up with uh, with twenties so, so uh, about 13 twenties yeah um, that's not a bad ratio I've had is it two commons in amongst that yeah about a 26 and a 27 um so i've never had a 30 pound common from here right. so um you know should, should an alarm rip off now in the last sort of half an hour you know it's if it, if it absolutely sort of perfect scenario it would be a 30 pound con i'd uh. love to catch 30 pound <laughs> con but, but i know that you know they're pretty yeah they're pretty well uh. in here so yeah, I've seen a few of the pictures that Carl's taken for you. There's some nice yeah. fish on there. That, that zip yeah. linear is yeah. stunning, Absol isn't it? That, yeah, yeah, absolute. I mean, just that fish on its own would make a session. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it, it's um, normally when, you know, when I fish, I'm looking for a bite. That's I go fishing to catch a fish. That's yeah. it, you know. It doesn't matter if I do a day session. You know, I never do more than two nights. Um, my aim is I go fishing to catch a fish. Yeah. If it's big, it's a cherry on the cake. If you catch more than one, brilliant fantastic you know and something like just like that zip linear it, it's just a stunning fish yeah. you, know, you could fish you could fish for years and not catch a fish as a track the weight's immaterial it's irrelevant yeah, yeah, yeah. when they look like yeah. that some lovely you know. colors on them as well yeah well they're, yeah. they're sort of fully winterized yeah. you know i've took the water temperature you know it's not a fat lot over eight and a half degrees um i think a lot of the fish are sort of still leached and lysed up and stuff from the winter yeah. perfectly conditioned the colors are obviously really bright and vivid because they're still very winterized the water's crystal clear um and we were chatting yesterday it was noticeable all the sort of the pipe was striking yesterday yeah. you know just noticeable how active the lake is um although you, I, i've only seen a handful of shows in the daytime at night you know when it's not having it down with rain as it did most of last night you, you can hear the fish boshing yeah. out in front of you you know they, they, they've they've obviously this is the first time i've been back since november but they're obviously very active yeah and um, they're obviously woken up and clearly they're on the feed yeah you know. I, I always tell people after the sort of winter break once the water gets to about nine degrees yeah that seems to be a massive switch on for the whole other day yeah yeah i don't know yesterday we had a look at it we're 8.8 .8, so That's it. not a million yeah. miles off it? no and i think i've noticed having fished here for a few years now um at this sort of time of year the first sort of storm the first sort of blow that sort of it, it, in conjunction with low pressure so your temperature rises a little bit it really seems to wake the fish up here yeah. you know, they really do like a good wind on here they, you know they, they like a good storm yeah it gets them moving it gets the, it gets the water moving um and that's often what i look for you know I t as you know i tend to fish here in the, in the spring and the autumn um and in, in the spring early spring late winter as it is i'm looking for those couple of storms in a row or that real low pressure you know just to lift that water temperature a little bit get the fish moving yeah yeah and it really does um it, yeah. it, re it really does sort of just switch them on sort of you know almost overnight yeah they go you can see how dormant they've been from the from, from the you know all the other lights and everything but obviously they're you know they're clearly up and about now yeah uh, uh rig wise yeah you kind of you haven't got any magic rig you <laughs> <laughs> you, just got, you, you just use a rig that you you know works yeah. sort of thing to be honest in in pretty much all my fishing i use two rigs um yeah. anybody that sort of knows me uh knows sees my fishing i'm a big fan of the stiff hinge um especially in the winter um i i, I love fishing boiling corn in the winter doing day sessions not hunting big fish just fishing for bites just going out and enjoying myself yeah. you know staying mobile staying warm um and i don't think you can be a hinge lift up off the bottom in the fish's faces a little bit something bright a few boilies scattered around it just seems to work for me yeah. uh, and my other ring is uh, my other rig is just the um the runny or the spinner or, or or i adapt it a little bit i suppose because i fish it flat on the deck which i think is commonly known as the german I'm not, I'm not so afraid with all these uh, rig yeah. now, you know, <laughs> basically it's a wafter rig for me. Yeah. Um, and if I want to fish it as a spinner, you put a pop-up on it, it just makes the hook stand up. Um, but being so I fish, I don't just fish purely boily here, you know, I fish a mix of sort of pellet corn, boily. Um, so the fish are hoovering, they're staying close to the bottom, they're not individually targeting baits. Uh, yeah. So really I don't want my bait to be stood an inch off the bottom. Um, you know, I want it down there. I'm sure a snowman would probably work just as well, something like that. 
maybe yeah. even a standard bottom bait if anybody does that anymore um yeah, yeah it seems nothing. To have gone out of favor, it does it? very it's much so up, yeah. yeah you know you, you do read some of the old articles you know it was a bottom you know i'll put a boilie on straight out the bag yeah, yeah. you know you just yeah. don't really see that anymore do you yeah. so i don't know really um yeah i yeah. always tell people when people come into the shop the first time that they think there's some magic bait and some magic rig yeah. but I, I always say if you've got a rig and a bait that has done your fish elsewhere yeah there's no reason it wouldn't work on here no. do you think that's a sort of fair assessment yeah 100 percent. It, it essentially what you're saying is confidence yeah, yeah. If, if you're sat behind something that you have confidence in then it will work yeah because you're willing to give it a chance because you know it's worked for you in other situations yeah you know i think if you're trying stuff different stuff all the time and you've got no confidence in it you really give it the time to work you know you, you need to find stuff that suits your angling or suits the way you want to fish yeah uh, you know there's loads of different ways to carp fish there's loads of different ways to catch carp yeah uh, you know uh, it always makes me laugh on here because if someone has a few fish on here and uh, says using a bright orange pop-up yeah the next day so there's a stream of people coming to the shop buying <laughs> tubs of orange pop-ups <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you think no you, you know you, you've it's worthwhile doing it on one rod but like say if you've got something that's worked for you elsewhere yeah. it'll work here yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or if you go to a new venue and you're not sure stick to a rig that you're confident in that you know will catch fish I mean, most you know, you can't go wrong nowadays with rigs. Really, you you buy them pre-made. Yeah. You know? And if you're unsure, try a variety. You know, like yeah. you said, if if you know if you're aware of a going bait or you know a flavour or colour, put that on one rod. And if you like something else, try that on another rod. You know, and that's not. And then if that one particular rod goes in one particular colour, it's very much what I will do. And I'll swap two rods to that colour then. Yeah. And if it goes again, I might go right. I'll put all three rods in that colour then because clearly the fish seem to be enjoying. And again. It's just confidence. Yeah, yeah. Because you've had a couple of takes on that colour. So yeah, you're yeah. confident it will go again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You've fished Cap Sight of Waters a fair number of years now. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've seen it sort of develop, like I said, we had the fish kill in 2011. Yeah. You, you've, you've sort of been in and out since then. You, yeah. you must have seen it developing. Yeah, I mean, the stock in here is just phenomenal. It, it just. It's, I tell you because obviously you know I've got a Farrier's ticket as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been mean, lucky enough to what, have classed as like a gold ticket, so I can fish both the waters as a syndicate member. Um, and I, I think I always say to people the biggest difference for me with Farriers is because it's predominantly commons, and really you know you, you're chasing forty pound commons. That's yeah, what yeah. you want. That's what you you know that's what the sort of the, the jewel in yeah, the crown yeah, yeah. Farriers. And I also the difference is when you when you net a fish at Farriers, you look in and you say how big is it? Because there's every chance it's a common. Yeah. Whereas you net a fish here, and it's like a pick and mix. Yeah. It's not. It's not how big it is. What have I got? Yeah. What have I got this time? You know, is it a fully scaled? Is it a zipline? Is it an original? Is it a common? Yeah. It's, it's just. It's amazing. And 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 slowly, the, the average size of the fish is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. You know, I think last year you've got photos of 65 different 30s. Is it? Yeah, the photos we had sent in, we sent them all off to Josh, bless him, and he yeah. had a look through them and he identified 65 different 30s. Then were just what we caught last year. We don't get anywhere near all the photos no. in, and a lot yeah. of secret squirrels on yeah. here. That, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that, that's not a bad, not a bad head of 30s. So I think I think you could realistically say, sort of, top, you know, six months on as well from most of those photos coming up in the springtime as fish start to put a bit of weight on. I mean, you know, I think if you said we've got 60 to 90 different 30s in this lake, you know, I think oh, that'd easily. be a Oh, easily, yeah, 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 you know, if not then, more sort of thing. What, roughly a thousand carp stuff? Yeah, I would say so. You know, I mean, if you just take what I've caught as, as, a, as, as, a, as a microcosm of what's in here, you know, look how many 20, it must have 720s in it. Yeah, I reckon so, yeah, it's you got know, to be. Yeah. Of maybe 130s, yeah. let's say top end, yeah. and all the others are doubles. You know, I've not had a, sing I've not had a single or anything. You know, I yeah. think the smallest of ads are a 13, a couple of 16s and a 19. Yeah, there's a few escapees from the stock ponds that have gone in here. Yes, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> they soon learn to avoid the rigs, don't they? We, yeah. Obviously, we have that at Farry's when you know, the few stockies go in, they get caught a few times, and all of a sudden they get as hard to catch as everything yeah. else. They soon learn. Yeah, I'll put you on the spot here. Favourite water, farriers or horseshoe? Oh, um, no, I, I like them both for different reasons. Yeah. Um, I love fishing three on a spot. I love putting a bit of bait out. I love just, you know, you can catch fish here. It's possible to catch three, four, five, six fish on a trip. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. it's not beyond the realms. Uh, I love that type of fishing. 
but at the same time I love the intimacy of farriers yeah. I love fishing six six wraps out eight wraps out dropping it on a clear spot in some weed you know where you're just hunting for that maybe one bite yeah, in 24 yeah. 48 hours but the reward can be immense you know yeah. a 40 pound common it, it's it's to see them on the bank is incredible so yeah. for very different reasons i love both waters yeah i must admit i don't don't fish it a lot but when i go to farriers i'm kind of wanting a 40 pound fish in farriers and yeah well that's yeah, yeah i mean i'm obviously doing it wrong i'm three blanks <laughs> <laughs> three blanks in so it's a tough water yeah you know um I, I spoke to uh, a good friend who fishes on there a bit. I bumped into him here actually in November, and I said, uh, you know, have you got on at Farriers this year? I haven't really asked. Any, and he just had the one stock it. Yeah. You know, and he's a fair angler. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, the, the problem is, you, you only see what people catch. You don't see the hours. Yeah. You know, the, sort of the rod hours and the time spent and the blanks. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes the perception of Farriers is you turn up and. 40 pound commons are climbing up your line yeah, yeah. and they're really not yeah. you know th there's an awful lot of guys there that put an awful lot of time in it and, and struggle for a handful of bites so yeah i mean even the guys doing really well uh i think if you can average like a fish a night on average oh yeah you're doing incredibly yeah. well yeah you know unless you're Stu morris i used to <laughs> i used to fish there and be blanking it and up for a quick overnight and uh, see him packing up in the morning yeah a couple of four it's <laughs> right, yeah. Really? Well, yeah, yeah you all seem to get a few guys yeah, yeah. yeah. again on, on sort of the, the the sort of flip side of that uh, both a good friend of ours john flew in uh, i think he's at eight or nine 38 and 39s now yeah. like, he might have even had 10 he's never he's not quite just ounces away from a 40 yeah. pounder every you know he could be into like 10 40s I, I think he was telling me he's had three 29 40 uh, 39 14s yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, incredible. <laughs> it's just it's just incredible it's, it's like john you want to check your scales <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah for real yeah, yeah. they get stuck <laughs> right then i think i've put you off uh, your captain it's long i know you've yeah. Been, it, yeah yeah well this time of day it's um so a lot of the i've had a lot sort of early evening and i've had most of them sort of early morning through to sort of dinner time yeah, yeah. so yeah after that triple take it has gone very quiet whether they've they do seem to be coming in in waves yeah. so um you know i've had, well, say a couple of double takes and that triple take and, they do, and even when you just catch the one you seem to catch another one within sort of 10 or 20 minutes then you can have 45 minutes an hour of sort of quite quiet yeah, yeah. and then they seem to come in again and feed and which is not a bad thing is it no well I was struggling to get a cup of coffee yesterday morning yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just, oh carl makes a cup of coffee will you? <laughs> yeah we've been putting much bit out of them um for the time of year yes i'd say for the time of year yeah, yeah, yeah. um I, I mean again in 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 the warmer months here i won't think of anything of putting 80 or 90 bombs out to start with yeah. you know, almost a full bucket yeah. because you've got to think you might get you might get a shoal of 60 to 90, 20, averaging 20 odd pound carp come in. I mean, they'll eat you out of house and home in 10 minutes. Uh, you know, and you've got to, when you know the catch time can be quite truncated, especially in the summer months, when they're going to come in and feed at first light through to sort of late morning, you just need to try and hold them as long as you yeah. can. And obviously the longer you can hold them, the, the more bites you can try and get in, you know, be more as productive as possible in that time. Uh, I think if you only put a smaller bait of bait out, they may drop on it very quickly and, and they're gone. Yeah. And they'll go to the next peg where there's more bait. Uh, so yeah, relatively I, for the time here, I have put a bit in. Yeah, I always tell people in Winter Bay, put a bit of bait out if you get on the fish just spawn them and yeah, yeah, get as yeah. much bait out well, as I've you had, can because they, I've, I've had a two takes while spawning yeah oh yeah they don't they're not bothered they don't spook from it here no, no, and no, no. like you said they, they definitely clear off once they've cleared you out so yeah yeah 100% you, 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 if, you know, yeah. if your bait's not there you, you kind of miss your chance no and again I also think you don't necessarily attract the attention of the shoal if there isn't a visual bait down there yeah, yeah. you know you might if there's a small amount you might get one or two fish drop down and have a bit of a whereas if you've got a reasonably big area with a lot of bait down there you're going to attract more fish yeah, yeah. you know and, and then nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd and then once fish start feeding it's that old feeding pyramid isn't it yeah, once yeah. you get a few, you know even with the silvers the roach and the perch once you, they start feeding the carp come to investigate yeah, the come in yeah. that draws more fish in if your bait's gone by then there's nothing left you're not really going to catch anything uh, you know you, you're definitely you know i think with the sort of shoal mentality of the fish in here um and the average size of the fish in here you know it's 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 definitely worth putting a bit more out say than than a bit less yeah yeah i always think the birds are a good indicator on here as well the the the, the, the carp never seem to be far away from the birds <laughs> no i often 
I don't, I don't know. It's chicken and the egg, isn't it? Uh, what comes first, yeah, the birds yeah, or the yeah. calf? I don't yeah. know. Sometimes I think, do, do the carp follow the birds or the birds follow the calf? Yeah. Again, you'll catch the carp when the birds are on you. Yeah. There's no need to try and scare them off or be concerned. I haven't picked a bird at once, and yet at no. times I've had 40 or 50 all over me. You Sounds know. like my social life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, on that note, I'll let you crack on with it. Cheers. Good, thanks, thanks very much. No problems, you're welcome. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks there to John Morgan, who uh, I think you'll all agree had uh, a bit of a session there. Uh, 20 fish at any time of the year, there's some going, but uh, this time of year especially. So, uh, yeah, some nice fish amongst them as well. Uh, I think he had three or four 30 pound plus fish as well. So, uh, yeah, really nice to see Horseshoe starting. It's, uh, I know I'm biased, but uh, Horseshoe's got to be one of the best lakes in the country by far. It's the, there's lakes with bigger fish, there's lakes with more fish, there might be lakes with this, that and the other, but I think if you just want to go fishing and chill out and be left alone and have the chance of catching a few fish, uh, you go a long way to beat Horseshoe, so uh, anyway, that was John Morgan, so uh, then uh, that was February really, you've seen uh, the work we've been up to with uh, We've more or less finished the uh, winter road bank now with a couple of barrows of stone and maybe a few more chippies to put down and uh, it's good to go so that takes us into March. Uh, just on February though, the, the other week marked the uh, first anniversary of the uh, sad passing of uh, old Nick, Nick Scott, he uh, passed away last February and uh, it's quite apt that we're here now. Uh, this is a bench that a few of us uh, chipped to and uh, bought for Nick with a little homage to his favourite band, uh, the Rolling Stones there. Uh, yeah, Nick were a lifelong uh, member of the Carp Society and uh, he, he were always here at every uh, work party we did. And, uh, but more than that, he were, uh, he were a really good friend and uh, we still miss him dearly now. And, uh, sat here I'm just kind of smiling uh, last week his wife and his daughters came and uh, they spread some of his ashes uh, just out in front of us here and uh, like as well as carp angling Nick were uh, into his pike and uh, he'd do two or three days a week in the winter on here pike fishing and uh, I had a look where they'd spread his ashes and uh, <laughs> to smile to myself there were pike swimming above his ashes so uh, I don't know if that was the uh, pike getting the revenge on Nick, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so yes, we're missing dearly. So uh, anyway, like I said, that was February, and uh, we'll see you again in March, where uh, no doubt the fishing will have picked up. There'll be a few more people on, so I might catch up with a few more people. But uh, until then, we'll see you all later.